Welcome back to Milan Recording Studios. My name is James Pavel Schrakras, and in today's video, I figured I would revisit this cute little Hammond line voltage regulator and kind of expand upon a previous video that I made. Um, a while back, I made a video of this little guy talking about its use here in the studio. Essentially what this does is it takes the 120 volts coming out of the wall and is able to lower that this particular one goes all the way down to 110 volts. And the reason I would want this is for vintage tube equipment. A lot of people believe that this um, this vintage equipment, such as, say, for example, a guitar amplifier by Fender, uh, was not originally meant to be run at 120. It was more like 117, 115. And so a lot of people believe that by lowering the line voltage to an amplifier like this, you can actually lengthen the life of your tubes and prevent them from failing as soon. So that is the main reason I wanted to get this. This um, is to be able to run equipment through it and to prolong the lifespan of a lot of vintage tube equipment we have here at the studio. However, in that video, it actually raised a few questions um, from the the viewers that I wanted to address. Um, one of them is, you know, how long can you use this for? Um, why not use a Variac? And also, how many amps can it handle? So I figured I would talk about a couple of those and then also explore some other similar types of equipment that we're using here. This one here is in fact a vintage Variac made by Steiko, and then this one over here is actually a step down or a step up transformer, depending on your use, but I will get to both of those later in this video. Um, so first of all, the questions about the line voltage regulator. Um, first of all, this particular one is actually able to output 2.72 amps. Um, and you can actually figure this out using the Ohm's Law. So Ohm's Law was discovered by George Ohm. Uh, he lived from 1789 to 1854. He was a German uh, physicist. And he was very, very smart. And one thing he discovered was the relation between um, basically watts and voltage and amps. Um, and you can, there's actually a formula that you can use to, to figure out if you know two of those values, you can figure out the third value. So by dividing the watts by the voltage, you can discover how many amps a piece of equipment can use. So this little guy here uh, uses 300 watts and you can, its voltage is 110. That's the minimum voltage that it can use. And that's what I would be using to run, say, a guitar amp. So using that knowledge by dividing 300 by 110, you get 2.72. So that is the amount of amperage that this small one can output. This bigger one can output 8.69 um, by using the same formula. So for example, let's say I wanted to run a vintage um, tape recorder that I have here at the studio. I've been messing around with as an Ampex uh, piece of equipment. And I'll put its nameplate up on the screen here and you can see that it draws two amps. Um, and the little Hammond line voltage regulator can handle 2.72. And keep in mind that the Ampex tape recorder is not just a tape recorder, but you've got two separate preamps that are individual units with a bunch of different tubes in them. And then also you've got the whole tape recorder mechanism with the motors and all the pulleys and all that stuff. So that you, if you are only using one of the preamps, you could probably get two, three, maybe even four, if not more of those, and still be able to run all of them off of one of these Hammond line uh, voltage regulators. So that is a, that's kind of the answer to that question. And then with this big guy, you could run something much, much bigger than that. You could run eight of those Ampexes if you needed to, um, which is pretty cool. Um, so that's kind of a little, a little touch, a uh, little touch on the amperage side of things. And then another question people had is, why not use a Variac instead of this? Because a Variac actually does have a few advantages. This small line voltage regulator can take your wall voltage from 120 down to 110, and this one has a, a little bit less of a range. It can only go down to 115. However, a Variac can go all the way from nothing to over 120. And so a lot of people would say, why not use this instead? You have a lot more degree of freedom. However, um, in the manual for this, it actually says um, that it's totally good to, be, to use this um, piece of equipment for long durations of time, for hours and hours on end. And although you can use a Variac for that, that's not really what it's meant to do. Variacs are really made to, to run just for, you know, maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes at a time while testing pieces of equipment. They're really great for being able to detect anomalies in your equipment if you're um, bringing up the power and all of a sudden you see a spike in power, you can immediately shut off the power and know that something is going wrong before something actually fails in your equipment. And so that is really what Variacs are for. So in today's video, I figured I'd 
take some of these apart. I'm not going to take this one apart. I just don't really feel like doing it. There's not really much of a point. But I will take these three apart because they come apart very easily. And I will show you the internal workings of all three of them. And I will actually show you the differences between in the structure between the, uh, the, the, the switch over here on the line voltage regulator and the dial on the Variac. Because I think that's one of the big differences between these two. Before I do that, though, I figured I'd touch on this little thing because I haven't really talked about it at all. Um, this is a step up or a step down transformer, and this one is made for Japan. And I'm actually using it right now for the audio in this video. Um, so this is actually part of the audio chain in a sense because... Um, we're using a piece of equipment that was made in Japan for Japan, and Japan actually uses 100 volts. And although you could, in theory, just plug that piece of equipment directly into the American wall socket and run 120 volts through it, our walls actually use 122 volts, um, you can get away with that, but it will mo more than likely decrease the lifespan of this piece of equipment. S and because we like to do things as proper as possible here at Milan Recording Studios, what uh, we have is this step-down transformer. Um, so this is stepping down the voltage of the 120 volts coming out of the wall to 110, which is then going into the piece of equipment. What's really cool about this, though, is you could actually use it the other way around. If you were in Japan and you needed to run a piece of American equipment, you could actually flip this red switch and then take the 100 volts and step it up to 110 which I think is really awesome. They also make these for Europe as well, so you can have the 240 volts step down to American or vice versa, which is really cool. So now that that's out of the way, I just thought I'd talk about that cool little thing. Now let's take these apart and check out what they look like inside. So we've got the top cover off of both of the line voltage regulators, the little one and the big one, the 300 watt and the 1000 watt. And as you can see, in a sense, there is no difference on the inside. They're basically the same. You've got your transformer here, you've got your dial here, and then you have your gauge here. On the front of this one, you have your power inputs where you plug something into it, and then on the back of this one, you have your one power output. However, the big obvious difference that I didn't even bother to mention is the fact that the this one is a lot bigger than this one. I think that's obvious enough. I don't have to mention it. Um, the transformer on this alone is like the size of the rest of this. Uh, it's it's really huge. Um, and as far as power consumption is concerned, this is three times more powerful than the little one. Um, so it's pretty crazy. So what I'm going to do now is actually show you the difference between the dial mechanism um, or the knob mechanism, whatever you want to call that, of the line voltage regulator versus the Variac. Because that's another reason why the line voltage regulators are meant to run for long periods at a time is because the design of this is a lot different. Now, I would show you the bigger one because it's bigger and easier to see, but the mechanism is actually all enclosed. It works just fine, but you can't actually see it moving, which is the main idea here. So I'm actually going to use the smaller one and show you how this works and why this is different than the way a Variac works. So with a closer inspection of the line voltage regulators design, we can see here that this dial essentially has predetermined positions that are sent to the transformer. And there are there is not an infinite amount of possibilities of positions. There's a preset amount of positions. So as you turn this dial up in the front, you'll notice that as I turn it, you'll see something in the back move. See that? And it clicks. So each position is a preset position that is a predetermined value of power, say. So for example, in for this here is going to be a specific value, and then when I bump it up, it's going to go up by a couple of, of uh, volts, and then a couple more, and then a couple more, and then a couple more. But in between those, there's actually no power at all. If I had something plugged in, and I put the dial right to, the, wait for it, wait for it, right there, oh, it won't sit there. Right there, there's no power. Right now, there's no power going out to this outlet because um, there's no power in between each individual settings. Right now, there is. Now, there is. But then if I put it in between those two, you would actually lose power. So that is another reason why the line voltage regulator kind of can't be used as a variac of sorts because the... Um, the power output here is not constant. It will actually switch off in between each predetermined setting. And that is kind of why the line voltage regulator is better for being used for long term, for, for a long duration, because it's meant to just sit in one spot and not be moved around a lot. Although you can move it, but it's really meant to be set in one spot for a long time. Let's take a look at the Variac, which is actually right back here, and we will take a look and see how that works in contrast. So here's a look at the Variac's mechanism, and as you can see, it's kind of similar. You've got this big round dial, and then when I turn the 
knob on front, you're gonna see something spin. But when I begin to turn this knob, you're gonna see something a lot different than we saw on the line voltage regulator. See that it turns nice and smoothly. It does stutter a little bit, but you can see that the idea here is that it can move completely smoothly and it doesn't have any stopping points. It just can infinitely turn over the, the face of this dial. And so it's essentially a wiper design. So the, this little contact will wipe across the surface um, of the other part back there and you will always have a constant signal. However, while there is a massive advantage to that, and that advantage is that you will never lose signal like you will on the line vol voltage regulator, and it's really, really great for slowly being able to slowly bring up or bring down the power on a piece of equipment you're booting up, um, the disadvantage here is that it's probably not as durable for con for continuous use. Um, you know, perhaps something could fail if you're running something at very high voltage for a long period of time. You wouldn't want to be using a Variac for that. Uh, you would instead be wanting to use a line voltage regulator. Um, so that is kind of the, the downside to a Variac, and that's why for our purpose of, say, running a tube guitar amp for three hours for a recording session, that's where a line voltage regulator would come in. That's off camera over here. And a Variac would not be the job for that. However, if we bought a a, uh, a used a vintage guitar amp that was brand new to us, and we wanted to fire it up with the Variac and make sure there were no anomalies and no problems, well, this would be the thing to use and not actually the line voltage regulator. There's also additional, um, uh, um, What's the word I'm looking for? There's additional, there's, there's additional meters on the front of the Variac 2 that will give you additional information about the equipment you're, you're, you're firing up, and uh, you, you will be able to tell more information about the power draw and to be able to tell if something goes wrong. So a Variac definitely has its use, but for running vintage tube equipment for long durations of time during a recording session or for general use, a Variac probably isn't the thing you'd want to use. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that video of the Hammond line voltage regulator and some of my logic behind why I'm using it in the way that I am, and hopefully any of your questions and concerns are now all clarified, and if all of them aren't, hopefully most of them are. Uh, again, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. There's a lot of cool little things on this table, and I think all of them are equally unique. I think this thing is cute. I think this thing is really cool. This thing is just plain awesome, and I think this is very useful. Um, so I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Now, the next video, well, most likely the next video that you're going to see on the channel is actually also going to be featuring this Staco Variac. Uh, what we're going to be doing is using it with a line voltage limiter uh, that we have built ourselves. It's actually very easy to build one. They're very effective, and I will actually talk about kind of, I won't go deep into how to build it, but I will talk about the way it was built, and we will also use it in conjunction with the Variac uh, next time we get in a piece of vintage equipment. Um, so that will be coming up uh, shortly in the future, um, probably within the next week or so. Um, so definitely stay tuned for that, and uh, if you're new here, you might want to think, uh, think about subscribing for uh, cool behind-the-scenes content at Milan Recording Studios, and if you do that, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.